Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the channel and welcome to the September Arizona Fishing Report. Before I get into the report, as always, I want to let you guys know that this is brought to you by Hatch Toyota in Shello, Arizona. If you guys are in the market for a Toyota, uh, especially a Tundra, make sure you give those guys a look. They're awesome to deal with. They've got a great selection, great prices. Uh, also brought to you by Signature Gate Systems. If you need any type of work with electronic, automatic gates, those are your guys to call. Um, and I've got a couple uh, dates remaining for guide trips this fall. So if you're looking to work on your electronics game, you want to learn a new lake, you want to just go fishing and catch some fish, go ahead and send me an email at azangler at gmail.com. Again, that's azangler at gmail.com, and uh, we can talk about going fishing. So let's start with the report. September is a really transitional month. I've talked about it before. It's a month where the fish are moving from their summer patterns into their fall patterns. You got a little bit of uh, everything going on, and it can be tough. Not as tough as it is in certain parts of the country. When you start to get the fall turnover, you know, back east, the fishing gets brutal. That's not what we have going on out here. It's still very fishable. You can go out there and have some good days. But you'll notice the same spots that were working for you all summer and the same baits may not be working as well anymore. It's time to change, time to switch things up. A lot of fish going shallow, some fish staying deep, some fish going even deeper. Uh, it's kind of tricky, but there's fish to be caught and uh, we've been catching them. We've had a, a pretty good month. Starting at the top of the Salt River chain at Roosevelt, the water's down about 20 feet. It's 77% full and fishing's been good. Um, had some really successful days out there recently throwing top water and also mixing in the deep bite. If you're gonna throw top water, it's really hard to beat a buzz bait out there right now. Um, the biggest reason for that is you've still got a lot of brush in the water and the buzz bait is a forgiving bait. You're not having to worry about, you know, um, treble hooks snagging up in the trees. You can throw it on straight braid. I throw a buzz bait, straight 50 pound test braid, 7.3 medium heavy Abu Garcia rod. Throw it up into the thick stuff and, and reel it through the lanes. If you can find some grass, it's gonna be a big benefit. If you can find some fish chasing dragonflies, it's gonna be a big benefit. Um, and of course, if you can find some shad, that's gonna be huge. The shad are gonna be moving in more and more as uh, time goes on. As of like last week, there weren't many shad back in the pockets yet, but the fish are already there. They're there eating dragonflies. You're gonna notice the dragonfly deal gets better as the day goes on. You know, the first couple hours, you don't see them buzzing around. You don't see the fish up, jumping up and eating them. After a couple hours, 9, 10 o'clock, you, you notice it. And, and by the time you get to late morning, it's full blown. They're looking for those dragonflies. This is a great way to, to mimic them. Uh, you can throw the buzz bait with a regular skirt. Um, seems to me like you might get a couple more bites throwing it with the skirt. But if you're looking for a bigger bite, you know, a little bit more sizable bait, what I'll do is I'll take this toad right here, or this buzz bait, and I'll put a toad on it. This is a Berkeley Buzz and Speed toad. I'll thread this thing on here and it's gonna be rigged like that. Um, like I said, the skirt seems to get more bites, but this seems to get bigger bites. So you can kind of maybe maybe rig one of each up and, and see what those fish want on that particular day. But great way to catch those fish, not just at Roosevelt, but all the lakes in general right now. You can get crazy and match the color of your skirt or your bait to the dragonflies that they're chasing, but just throwing straight white's been really good for us. So we haven't gotten too tricky with it. Um, throwing straight white's been really good. Another great way to catch those fish up in that brush and that thick cover, Roosevelt and all of the lakes right now, is a soft jerk bait. Um, just like this, just rig it up. This is a Berkeley Power Jerk Shad. Just rig it up on a four-aught extra wide gap hook and you can, same thing, fish it pretty weedlessly through the brush. If you've got someone that isn't quite the uh, the super accurate caster, that's a great way to, uh, you, the great thing, you could throw it on a spinning rod with a little bit heavier leader than you normally throw, get it through the stuff and catch a bunch of fish. Um, also been catching some fish on a uh, vibrating jig. You know, it really doesn't seem to matter 100% what bait you throw as long as you're in the right areas, cover a lot of water. You know, there's gonna be, you're gonna go into one bay and not catch much and go into another bay and catch three or four or five or six. So covering water to get to that area, to that zone that has more fish is really key. You can afford to fish really fast right now. So keep that trolling motor on high and go, go, go until you start to find some of the key areas that those fish are using. Um, and the deep bite's been really good too as well. Um, mainly been drop shotting those fish. Berkeley bottom hopper, um, any type of hand poured style worm works really, really well. And they're deep. I mean, those fish are down there to the 20 foot depth. It's not been that great for me. I've been catching them a little bit deeper. So um, 
you know, get out there, use those graphs. There's still a lot of fish out there deep. There's, as we move down to Apache, um, the topwater bite hasn't really kicked off down there for me quite yet. We've been catching fish still on a drop shot. A lot of those fish are using open water. So if you've got electronics and like to use the live scope, you know, the jig head minnow type deal. This is a Berkeley drip swimmer. The Berkeley drip minnow has been really good too, but going around and scoping those fish has been an option. Um, but again, drop shot's been really good out there as well. Um, but I did, like I mentioned it in my last report, probably this fish seemed to be getting up and chasing bait a little bit more out there. The top water bite will be turning on any day. It will be cooling off. Uh, the lake's got some grass. They're going to start using that grass soon. So um, I would, you know, Apache was an A plus all summer long. That grade has gone down a little bit over the last month or so for me, but still a great place to go catch some fish and uh, get away from the boats. The road is pretty much paved now, um, or chip sealed anyways. I was able to get all the way to Burnt Corral uh, last time I went without having to drive on any dirt. So that was a nice change, you know. It's, uh, it's one of those things, it's Catch-22, that having the dirt road was difficult to get into. It kept more people away from going to the lake, kept the lake empty. However, it's nice not having to take all your rods off your deck, cover your boat, worry about the dust. So um, that is kind of a cool thing about Apache. Uh, down at Canyon, I haven't spent much time out there. It's been kind of hit or miss all summer long. Um, always worth going if you want to catch a big fish. Um, but, you know, if I was going there, I'd be fishing shallow. I wouldn't be messing with fishing deep right now. Fish shallow, get in that shallow cover, um, and try to get a big bite fishing that way. Saguaro... So also hit or miss you know it's been uh, good all summer but um, I want to start getting out there a little bit more over the next month or so but I've really kind of been avoiding it a little bit because it has been a little bit hit or miss and uh, when I'm taking people fishing I want to make sure it's a sure thing um, but if I was going to soar right now I'd still give the wall some time um, but I'd be mixing in some reaction stuff too maybe throwing a top water maybe throwing a crankbait um, just know that you're going you might go out there one day and really struggle and catch one or two or three and then the next day you run into a dozen so um, always a chance for a big fish and it's always fun to go out there um, there was a uh, the finals of the local head-to-head -head tournament was out there recently and the weights were about as low as you'll ever see at Saguaro 13 pounds one and uh, was six pretty good fishermen fishing so um, Saguaro has been a little tough Moving over to Lake Pleasant, um, you know, hit or miss as well. You know, that place, this time of year, when I like to go there, I throw a lot of top water. I throw top water throughout the whole fall out there. It's a great top water lake. I'd be looking to go do that. Um, something like a Berkeley Chopo or a walking bait would be a great way to go. Buzz bait, if you can uh, get up in the backs of the very backs of the coves. Always drop shots, a good way to consistently catch fish, but. Um, Top water and drop shot would be my approach going at Pleasant right now. The stripers have been a big deal over the last couple of months out there with the big flutter spoons. Still definitely worth going and trying that out. Haven't heard as much about that over the last few weeks. Um, not really sure why, but um, it may be tapering off or maybe just we're not hearing about it quite as much. But um, that's been good all summer long. Bartlett, I've actually spent quite a bit of time out there. The lake's 55% full, about 35 feet down. Um, and fishing, you can go catch numbers as always. There's some top water going on, uh, some fish chasing bait still. Um, you know, you can catch quite a few fish on the bottom throwing a Texas rig or a drop shot. Definitely worth throwing a crankbait as well. The water is clearer than it was last year. Last year, this time of year, we were catching them cranking really good because the water had a lot of extra color to it. This year, it seems to be a lot clearer. So, um, you know, the crankbait bite is still worth doing, but it's not the crazy all-day shallow crankbait bite. When that water's clearer out there, those fish are notorious for sometimes going a little bit deeper and then sometimes getting out and chasing bait more as when the water is dirty there, they get right on the bank, they stay super shallow on the rocks, on the cover, and they're a little bit easier to find and catch. So uh, we'll see what the water does out there. But um, back to Pleasant uh, on the water anyways, the water was dropping really rapidly. It's starting to stabilize. Before too long, it's gonna stop dropping and start coming back up. But for now, it's still on the down on the downswing. Um, that'll be turning really soon. Um, I always talk, I tease the Colorado River on these fishing reports. Unfortunately, I don't get over there as much as the other lakes. I was just at Lake Mead for the One Bass Open, um, for the One Bass Nevada Open um, up till just a couple days ago. And man, fishing was good. It's as good as I've ever seen in September at Lake Mead. 
by the end of the week, the lake got pretty pressured, and you can definitely see the effects on that. But um, topwater bite was phenomenal. Um, guys caught most of the fish on reaction baits. I ended up having a decent tournament. I had a really good start. I was in fifth place after the first day out of 103 boats. I ended up sliding to 19th, so um, it was an okay tournament for me. Um, caught a lot of smallmouth, um, some largemouth as well. But if you're going out there right now, the topwater bite is is prime it's going to be good for here probably for another close to a month before that really kind of starts fading off so if you're anywhere in that region and you like throwing top water and catching a lot of fish that's a good place to go like i said i got hammered this week it'll go back to normal in another week or so and you'll have a few weeks to get out there um, and have the lake to yourself and catch a ton of fish um, i think that's about it guys appreciate you guys tuning in as always again if you're looking for a uh, fishing trip with me feel free to uh, send me an email i can let you know about the rates and stuff like that and um, yeah thanks again i will uh, be back at you guys for the report next month and hopefully uh, a couple more videos in the meantime see y'all